Let's, let's move it on. We've got so much content and excitement for you today. It gives me enormous pleasure to welcome Her Excellency Reem Al Hashmi, Minister of State for International Cooperation, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the government of the UAE. Your Excellency, please come on to the stage. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. Lovely to see you. What makes the India-UAE relationship so special? Uh, firstly, good morning to everybody uh, that is here. A big thank you to the organizers uh, and a special uh, warm welcome to all of our guests uh, in Dubai and in the United Arab Emirates. You know, it's hard to put your finger on what is it that makes the relationship special. I think it's a combination of factors across centuries. And I, I do believe that the consistency of our people-to-people -people relationship has really made all the difference. It is familiar to be in India. It is familiar for Indians to be here in the United Arab Emirates. And there is... Um, there's a synergy between how we view the world and also what we hope for the world and for ourselves. And I am confident that as we continue to grow this relationship, we're going to unfold and unlock so much more than what we already have. And you've clearly unlocked something quite incredible through this bilateral agreement. And we love acronyms, SEPA is what it's known as, the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. From here on in, we're going to call it SEPA. So if you hear SEPA, that's what it is. What excites you most about SEPA, which is the first bilateral agreement with India? It came into effect on May the 1st, and it could boost non-oil bilateral trade to $100 billion within five years. I mean, we're already seeing, and it's only been, what, eight or nine months in since the signing of our SEPA, a pickup of our trade of a good 30%. But what's really interesting about SEPA is that, look, we've always had a strong trade relationship with India. We have a strong people-to-people -people relationship. We're one of the biggest FDI investors in India, but likewise, Indian investment in the UAE is pretty strong. What SEPA does is it shines a spotlight on all of the other sectors that we traditionally don't go to. Sectors in telemedicine, in science and technology, in agricultural technology, in culture and arts that highlight what more can be done. And I go back to how I started, which is that people-to-people -people connection. The stronger that uh, corridor is, and the ambassador mentioned it earlier, the more powerful, I think, the agreement would be. Because anything on paper doesn't really live as strongly as if it, as if it lived in interactions and in experiences between people. How is it going to then define the economic partnership? You've just talked about what's been achieved in the first six, seven, eight months, which is very impressive. Over the years and the decades, let's look ahead to the years and the decades. How is it going to define that closeness, that economic partnership? So we're going to see a lot more on innovation and technology take a strong route as opposed to the traditional trading of goods, which has always been an important pillar. But now you're really looking at technology and innovation being another equally strong, if not stronger, pillar. I've always been excited about the cultural front. And, and here I do want to mention somebody in your audience, Mr. Shakar Kapoor, who I've had the honor of working with for the last several years and who was one of the Expo 2020 advisors um, in our board of advisors. Should we embarrass him and make him stand up or not? And, and applaud. Stand yes, up please, applaud. stand up and applaud. <laughs> The reason why I, I highlight Shakar is because he was part of one of the most beautiful projects at, Ex at Expo, which was a show in Al Wasl called Why. And the reason why I want to bring that to the table is because through that exchange, through engagement with Indian artists and uh, Indian actors and their synergies with Emiratis, 
and those who live in the UAE, we've begun and we've been able to really open up a completely new industry um, in ways that weren't so evident earlier. Now, SIPA wasn't necessarily the trigger for that, but because of SIPA, you will see far more um, opportunities like that unfold. Because culture often gets lost, doesn't it? Because it's important, but of course, there's the often geopolitical partnerships and economic partnerships and trade partnerships and all these wonderful sectors that are going to benefit and humans and employment and jobs and labor and all these things. But culture often gets missed in that. So it's wonderful that this is coming to the fore, isn't it? Yeah, culture and art is the glue. It's mm. what keeps all of those great big things staying great because you unless you are able to make people like being around their fellow counterparts it becomes a little sterile and quite dry you you want to create an affinity you want to create memories and to do that you must be able to foster not only like-mindedness mindfully but also spiritually you want to create affection and those are the types of emotions people have when they think of being in India or working with Indian uh, enterprises because the relationship is, as I said earlier, so familiar. Mm. They remember their father doing this and their grandfather doing this and their kids are watching them do this. So it becomes part of your very social fabric. Mm. Let's talk about another alliance that's been forged recently, which has huge hopes attached to it as well, this I2, U2 alliance, this coming together of, of India, the UAE as well, Israel and the United States, hence the name I2, U2. How does this body fit into your vision of the region's future? So after COVID, and, and we are well, I, I hope I can still say after COVID because we're still in a COVID environment, but certainly a lot better than when it hit in 2020. Um, the lessons of COVID taught us that it is important to build out different coalitions, different groupings of countries that share a similar perspective, but also that share a similar ambition. And rolling back to science and technology, and I'm very proud of our Assistant Minister for Science and Technology, Amran Sharaf, who will be speaking in a, in a couple of minutes. We looked at who are the countries that are doing so well in this space. And really, Israel, India, the US are one of, uh, are, are a small group of those that really excel. By creating this, um, coalition, if you will, I2U2, with a laser focus on how we use one another's strengths, we're able to capitalize on what is now our future perspective, which is science and tech. You saw it with the HOPE probe, you're see, you saw it with the Mars mission, you're seeing it with uh, the Rashid rover. Um, this is just one aspect of how we are focusing on a technology footprint, but also without losing uh, the importance of that uh, human um, element. Mm. And we're going to talk more about the Mars mission, as you say, uh, in just a few minutes' time. Do you think we're going to see more trans-regional alliances among countries that don't necessarily share borders, geographic borders, but have, like you were describing there, shared values, shared objectives as well? and shared ambitions for the future. Mm. I think this is about bandwidth and it's about appetite. And there are many countries who are very domestically driven and there are some that are looking to chart the future and are looking to create the path to that future in certain ways. And the UAE is very forward-looking, very optimistic about the future, very ambitious about it very grounded in, in realities that exist around us, but also feels a responsibility towards doing better and doing more. And so we're always pushing ourselves to look at ways in which we can better respond to global challenges by creating 
different and maybe even untraditional partnerships to help us collectively get there. And talking about responding to global challenges, there are many, far too many to mention, geopolitical challenges. Coming back to the UAE and India, how will this partnership work together to engender, create and promote national, international, regional stability? We're quite aligned uh, with India and we've seen that at the Security Council but also in many other multilateral forums. Um, our alignment on our overall foreign policy and security posture is quite similar. Um, I myself have been to India uh, a few times in the last uh, couple of months and as the ambassador mentioned our principals have been meeting with one another quite regularly simply because there's there's that sense of alignment and as the geopolitical planes change as they have been changing in the last uh, couple of years um, as our understanding from COVID, I, I think, you know, we don't talk enough about the lessons we learned from COVID. And we should learn from what happened uh, during COVID. It wasn't simply a health um, crisis. It had massive knock-on effects across the board, whether economic or supply chain, and it shook all of us. I think most people don't want to remember how bad it was and they kind of, you remove your mask and you, you need to move forward and move on, if I may say. But there are lessons from that. There were times when we all went to bed afraid because we didn't know what would happen the next day. And we here in the UAE, I think we were very good students of understanding how do I prepare myself for the next pandemic? How do I mitigate my risks? How do I make sure that I'm not vulnerable? Et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, COVID is, is one important, um, not even generational, more than a generational um, in, uh, crisis that really did shake the planet um, uh, to a very large degree. And so from that, obviously, there is a war in Europe at the moment and a whole series of knock-on um, inflationary and economic challenges globally. Yeah. And that sets a landscape that's really tough to navigate. And so with our Indian fellow colleagues, um, think tank scholars and businesses, we are finding ways in which we can try to mitigate those challenges and in doing so, unlock new and different opportunities. It was a pleasure to talk to you today. It's lovely to be with you too. Thank, Thank you, you so all much. for having me. Her Excellency Reem Al Hashmi, morning. Minister of State for International Cooperation, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Thank you very much indeed. See you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.